We are back with more of this Vote 2011 election special here on News 12. We're going to shift from the Westchester County Board right now to a local supervisor's race, specifically the race for Rye Town Supervisor. Let's get right to the candidates running for supervisor in the town of Rye this year. First, we welcome the incumbent, Joseph Carvin. Mr. Carvin is a Republican from Rybrook, currently serving his first term as Rye Town Supervisor. He also has the conservative and independence party lines in this race. Professionally, he is a hedge fund manager in New York City and founded Building Community Bridges, a nonprofit that helps bring the diverse people of the area together. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you so much, Brian. We also welcome Ricardo Rico Dos Anjos. Mr. Dos Anjos is a Democrat from Portchester. He is a retired IBM executive who runs a tax preparation company and teaches finance at Mercy College. He is also a very well-known martial arts instructor. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, sir. Good to see you both. Uh, we're going to start, uh, as I have been doing in all of these forums, with by giving you a minute to kind of state your case to the voters. We'll start with the challenger, Mr. Dos Anjos. Why should people vote for you on Election Day? People will vote for me on Election Day because uh, of the financial expertise that I have. Uh, I look upon this, this task as really financially oriented. Uh, the, my specific reason for uh, running, okay, is the reval. We know that the reval is a floor reval, as uh, said by my opponent, that uh, he takes full blame, he could have did it better, a day late, a dollar short, and uh, he should have reviewed all the records. Needless to say, that's a problem. The main and principal responsibility of the town of Rye is to get the assessment correct. The assessment reflects in the tax rate that we, we as taxpayers pay from a county, village, and school tax perspective. Uh, Mr. Carvin has mentioned that he has saved uh, the town of Rye 50% in taxes. 50% is a number, if you're a layman and you're not familiar with finance, 50% looks like a big number, but he equates to $80. Uh, something is better than nothing, but the town rate uh, t the town percentage of the total taxes is a half of 1%. What about the 99.5 that's left? All right, sir, thank you. Your minute is up. We're going to go to Mr. Carvin, and you can make your opening statement. Why should people re-elect you, sir? Sure. We took over from one of the most ethically challenged regimes in the history of Westchester County. They overspent their budget 10 years in a row and failed three successive New York State audits. We fixed their failed, heinous, morally corrupt reval. We put an end to their reckless spending. We reduced expenditures by 25%. There's no government entity in New York State that's reduced expenditures by 25%. We generated $4 million in savings. Let me put that in perspective. We could run 100% of town operations for a year and a half on that savings alone. Imagine you're on your own home budget. Wouldn't have to make an expenditure for a year and a half just on the savings, the frugal savings you made in the previous four years. We reduced taxes every year we've been in office. If we'd had the same non-tax revenues that the previous regime had had, we would have been able to eliminate 100% of the town tax and refund $250 to every property owner in the town of Rye. But we didn't stop there. We've taken the lead on local government restructuring. We secured a grant from New York State to eliminate what? The town of Rye. We're looking to eliminate our own job because we're fundamentally committed, one, to uh, fundamentally changing the tax dynamic in our community, two, best practice government, and three, trying to make our community model American community. We're very proud of the fact that we've taken Rye Town government from being a poster boy for bad government to a driving force for good government. So let, let's start. There's two big issues that just came out there. One is the elimination of town government. Uh, Mr. Dos Anjos, what do you think about that? Obviously, Mr. Carvin is, is on board considering that. Do you think, I mean, let's face it, it's really just a building. Uh, the rest of the town of Rye are the individual villages that are incorporated. Should there be a Rye town government, in your opinion? There's a study that's going on right now that will look at various cases, and they will then bring that forward and we as taxpayers will have a vote on that whether we should do it or not i'm in favor if it uh, uh save significant dollars to the taxpayer but uh i wait to see what the, the survey says you obviously like this idea even though it would eliminate your job if you were re-elected correct 
Absolutely, but I think it's important to understand that our tax burden is unsustainable. We're fundamentally committed to changing the tax dynamic in our community, whatever it takes, even if it includes eliminating the town of Rye. What we're, the, the study is going to do is look at the elimination of the town of Rye and or increased sharing of services. If I think if we get both, then we'll be able to get the material tax savings we need in order to move forward with this reform. And, and the villages would have to take over some functions that, that the town currently provides. Most of that has to do with collecting taxes, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. The most logical scenario is that the uh, villages would become coterminous town villages, and they would have to take on the assessment function that we do, the tax collection function they do, and then they'd have to operate the courts and, 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 and the two parks that we run. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think about the revaluation process? Mr. Dos Anjos yeah, says it was, uh, it was flawed, it's a mess. What do you uh, uh, Thank what's you your for response? the opportunity to respond to that. Our opponents have never once condemned the malicious, hateful reval that was done by the previous regime. How, hateful, was, it, how was it hateful? Hateful, exactly. The, re the previous regime put out a $1.5 million, no bid, no lose contract to a guy effectively working out of his garage. No bid, no lose. That, they had a clause in the contract that said, if the Morbido administration lost in the 2003 election, the full amount of the $1.5 million contract became immediately due and payable. They gave 450000 How did MJW come in? A guy named, uh, an assessment uh, advisor they brought in, they paid $450,000 to approve MJW for a no-show job. According to the assessment office, he, he spent three days, three days, $150,000 a day on their reval. And then what happened? The reval was a colossal failure, as per the IAAO. So we were digging out of a colossal hole trying to reform. We just met with the Board of Assessment Review the other day. He said, if we'd had our guys in place, because what do we do? We put out a contract for bid, got five proposals, and our reval cost $350,000. Not a guy working out of a garage, but working in 400 communities in the Northeast. So we took one of the top assessment firms and brought them in. What we were told by our Board of Assessment Review, if we'd had those guys in the beginning, we wouldn't be talking about reval today. Now, I did say we made some mistakes, but they were on the margin. We should have had a second round of interviews. I have to say, unfortunately, I think Mr. Dos Angeles, who was a friend of mine, has been advised by the henchmen for the Morbida regime, Strakuzzi and Branca. And rather than talk about real issues and fundamental issues in a credible and coherent way, he's talking the same Strakuzzi playbook, which is low-life politics. So what is your biggest beef with the way Reval was done on the second go-round, I guess? Well, uh, the first go-round, let's talk about the first go-round. Sure. The first go-round, um, that administration looked at 11,000 houses, okay? And they did external inspections, so they know if there were swimming pools, okay? Uh, the current administration did flybys and drive-bys, okay? And in doing that, they've lost some of the inventory. And, and it's very important for, to bring back uh, voter confidence, okay? They, f they feel that there was an unfair assessment, and that reflects in the tax rate that they pay. Okay, can I clarify? Let, let, let it finish, yep, let yep, it yep. finish. Okay. Um, and we got to restore that confidence back. Okay. Uh, the 11,000 houses, that was done properly, and it was New York State certified. That reval was New York State certified. So now you go ahead. Okay, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, we have to get our terminology straight. Physical inspections are 75% are of the cost of any reval. They did no physical inspections of residential commercial properties. We did physical inspections of the uh, commercial properties, not the residential. So he, he's, he's wrong factually on that point. Secondly, the International Association of Assessment Officers is the gold standard for valuation. This is what they said about their reval. MJW Consultant could not produce a data collection manual, valuation manual land value tables, valuation formulas, or commercial sales files. And this lack of documentation was in direct violation of the New York State Office of Real Property Service Valuation Standards. That's the IWLO. They hired them. Now, this is the book they couldn't produce. This is the book they couldn't produce. This is the book we produced. Do we make mistakes in the margin? Absolutely. Do I take responsibility for them? Absolutely. I talked about good government, not perky government. But the, to, to try and cast dispersions on our reval, I think, is un unfair. And I think he's absolutely right. Reval depends on confidence of the people, and I think they're undermining the confidence of the people. There hasn't been an outcry about the assessments, and here we go. They couldn't produce this document, we could. All right, let me ask you, what, what, what are, what's another big issue? What, what, what are you very concerned about? What would you like to change? What is your biggest issue, Mr. Dos Santos? Uh, another big issue is the parks, okay? Uh, Oakland Beach, as we know it today, uh, used, to be, used to look like a botanical garden. 
I, I went by there earlier this week. I saw bricks hanging out. I, I saw cement peeling. Uh, the park does not look like it's supposed to look. Mr. Carvin says that he's curved expenditures. Well, it's easy to curve expenditures if you don't spend, okay? But do, those expenditures are going to have to come out whether it comes out this year or next year. Somebody's going to have to pay for it or we'll co constantly look at the decaying of the park. What, what's your response on that? Uh, again, factually incorrect. Their last in all, year in office, they lost $450,000 in the park. Worse, it's a cash business. They couldn't even account for the cash. We run the park at $100,000 deficits. No one, they didn't make a, a one single capital expenditure, really, except for the duck pond for the 14 years they were in office. Now, we, we all have a challenge with the 2% property tax uh, to, to do new infrastructure, new capital expenditure. And I completely agree, Mr. Zangel, we need new capital expenditure in the buildings. But they were left derelict for 14 years, and that's what we inherited. Quickly, what do you think about the future of Rye Playland? Because that obviously affects folks in your area. What would you like to see happen there? Do you want the park to close, the, 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 the amusement park portion, or do you want to keep the amusement park portion? Uh, I actually was on the, uh, the, the committee that looked at this and saw the proposals. Personally, I prefer to close the uh, amusement park. Uh, Westchester County is the only uh, county in the nation that runs an amusement park. I think they should close it, should make a passive park. Now, there were some very good proposals that came in, and I think ultimately uh, County Executive Astorino will take advantage. It's really three parks in one, and I think what they're going to do is uh, take the best of each of the three proposals. What's your take on Rye Playland? Rye Playland, uh, it's been there since I was a kid, and uh, it's county run, and uh, I would propose that the county uh, does what it needs to do. You want to see it stay open, the amusement yes, portion? Yes. You want to see it stay open? Yes, I do. All right, I have about a minute left. I'll give each 30 seconds again to state your case. Mr. Dos Santos, you go first. Uh, on November 8th, I ask that all of you folks come out and vote for me. Uh, I intend to be a hands-on supervisor. Um, my opponent uh, has a very demanding job, which takes him out of the country. Uh, and, and maybe that could be one of the reasons why we have a floor reval. I plan on u using my position as, as a full-time job, okay? And I need people to come and help me so I can fix the financial world of that. Thank you, sir. You get the final word, 30 seconds. Mr. Dos Angeles is a registered conservative. I want to make that clear. Uh -huh. I'm more of a Democrat than he is. Our opponents have never condemned the malicious, hateful malfeasance of the Morbido regime. Why not? I think it's because the Morbido regime henchmen are running their campaign. For me, the choice is clear. Best practice government with clear vision and years of municipal experience versus a group that hasn't even attended one single town meeting until this past Tuesday and no municipal experience. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see what happens on Election Day. Best of luck to both of you. Thank you for being here and watching at home as well. More local news coming your way.